gospel of Jesus Christ, but that's a very complicated issue. Well, actually a simple issue, but because of false prophets is very complicated because of all the deception. But what I want to get into talking about here is affordable housing. I got some books right here uh, about building houses and sheds and stuff. A book, How to Work Alone, that's a very good one with me because nobody ever helps me with anything. Um, but the problem with these books is uh, you'd have to own a lumber yard to, to actually build with these houses because they have so much lumber in them. And of course, it'd cost you a fortune. You'd, you'd have to work for the Illuminati to come up with enough money to ever afford such a thing. But I'm going to try to show you some more affordable ways of doing things, some stuff that I've done in structure designs. Right here, we're looking at a house probably built around uh, the early 1900s structure design, which looks pretty much similar to a house that's built nowadays. And this is my old house right here. We're looking at the roof that the ceiling fell in because of had a leaky roof. They put the chimney through the roof and couldn't stop the leak through there. And there's another shot of it right there where it started to rot and fall through. And I'm going to try to fix that. Right there is the top of the roof. That's that's the shingles that they put on that uh, around 1995 or somewhere around there. Anyway, them shingles about to come apart now, and the roof started leaking. They roofed the whole house around 1995. What I got here is uh, galvanized uh, tin. Uh, sheet metal that I got at Lowe's for around forty dollars. I was misled, you know, by all the rednecks that this stuff was about twelve hundred dollars a sheet. But this is what I'm going to put on my roof right here. This galvanized because it's much better than shingles. This stuff it just never it lasts forever, where shingles don't. Here's the uh, that's another sheet of uh, galvanized tin with some warper board. It's actually oriented strand board called wafer board. And if this stuff gets wet, that wafer board, yeah, that stuff will warp on you, rot on you, where it's no more good, and it doesn't take it very long to do that either. This here is a Sky Enterprise. Uh, shanty or ice shelter. And I actually live in this sometimes. My house, um, got where the dead animals would get under the house and it stinks so bad that I'd come out here and stay in this ice shelter. And these ice shelters, many of them are made out of, uh, uh, 600 denier or something like that which is also known as poly polyester this is polyester which means it is very resistant to the weather even though I recommend getting you some paint there's a paint that I recommend right here would be uh, rust oleum uh, lacquer uh, I don't like the Walmart paint that you get at that cheap stuff you get at Walmart because it it comes off really quick. But this uh, lacquer seems to stay on pretty good. And you paint the ice ice shelter with this, or you could go to and get you uh, an exterior outdoor paint and paint it and that'll help protect it from the sun but you can also put up them sheet uh, 
like what you can see right there that'll help to keep the the sun off of it because I've had many tarps including these PVC tarps that uh, that still get hose in them. They last longer than most any other tarp, probably not longer than uh, polyester tarps. But uh, these PVC tarps last the longest, but uh, they get where they're like a turn almost like solid where you can't even do anything for them, and they still get hose in them from this Oklahoma weather. Right there is another ice shelter. This one's made by Killzone. You can still get this one. You can't get that one by Sky Enterprise anymore because they quit marketing them. But you can still get these uh, kill zones at uh, Amazon and other places for less than $200. So that's a pretty good price because you can consider that's cheaper than rent an apartment anywhere. You know, around $200. You can replace that every few months if you had to. But but these have lasted a lot longer than any tent that I've ever had. Usually, most tents I've had had last less than a month, and they'd rot faster than I could paint them. Actually, I'm using this eye shelter right here as a washroom and a... Uh, and a shower and it, and it works really good I'll show you this in a little bit I'm going to show you my uh, Sky Enterprise what's inside that okay this is what's inside my ice shelter the Sky Enterprise I got my guitar out here I got that old television I got a PlayStation 3 in here I got my bed that uh, consists of an electric blanket, a sleeping bag, and these uh, emergency luminized blankets. They tear apart pretty good, but they're really cheap. You can get them at Amazon. Here's my Digitech uh, RP500. I don't really like it too much. I'd rather have a RP355. And it's got dirt on it because I didn't have enough uh, tarp to cover the whole floor. I'd use that PCV. And there's my gas heater. I got that at Cabela's. And that thing really puts out a lot of heat. Most efficient uh, gas heaters there is. But I also use electric in here too. I also had an air conditioner set up in here too. Using for a bed is the Sterilite uh, 45 gallon tote containers I got two of them under there and then on top of that I got a sheet of oriented strand wood and I just put that across that and then um, I don't have any but you can go to Walmart and they got this blue sleeping pad blue sleeping bag pads and they're pretty good. I'd like to use an air mattress, but I've never been able to get one of them to last more than a month. But this is really an excellent bed. I hate the Jonesy type mega beds. I hate them things. I'd, I'd much rather have this. Two Rubbermaid containers with a piece of oriented strand board on top of it. And one of them big Jonesy type beds. And for sure it costs a lot less too. And plus you got storage in there. It's a lot easier to move and everything. This is inside my kill zone eye shelter, which I'm using as a wash room and shower room. And over there are Gilmore uh Y valve water gate valves is what they are. And they're the the best you want to use the brass Gilmore because they're the best and these work every bit as good as them $500 water faucets that you see like at Lowe's these that's the reason why I use these and these only cost like ten dollars each and so they're much better and here I got these emergency blankets hung over the windows and using that 
for um, my curtains. <laughs> Here we got uh, infrared heaters. These are two electric heaters, and uh, and they're the most efficient ones there are. They have no fan, and they just last a lot longer, even though there is a fuse-type thing that you have to get in there and take it out because they'll burn out after about a year or two, so you have to, you know, bypass that. But after that, I have no idea how long they'll last. I haven't had one go out yet. Here are two plunger things that I use to wash my clothes. I just fill this up with water and um, then I just take the handles. And I got these at Emergency Essentials, uh, some kind of washer type deal. And anyway, they suck the water through and uh, they, they're like a toilet plunger except for they got hose in them. They're made specially for washing clothes and you just fill the container up with water this is a 45 gallon and usually the more water you use the cleaner you get them and you d this takes a few minutes a mouse got in my uh, whirlpool that wash machine that I got around um, 2003 and it made me so angry a dead mouse and dead rotted mouse in the tub of the wash machine that I just decided I wanted to do this instead Right there is a 45 gallon tote container. I use that to keep my clothes in after I clean them. I keep that in there. Right here is a 22 gallon tote that I cut some some slashes in. You cut them about from one inch from the bottom. And uh, you put your clothes in that and you run water through it and, uh, and it rinses them out. You let the water just rinse through there after you wash them in this tub then I put them in here and wash them and it's, it gets clothes clean I sure you it, it gets them clean when this thing is like seven feet high so there's plenty of room to stretch out I always have that problem of short ceilings where I stretch out and bump my hands against trying to put a shirt on something but this is almost seven feet so it works out pretty good Right there are some battery cable clamps, heavy duty ones. And I use them to hold up blankets and stuff. You know, to hang them out to dry. I ain't running across there as long as the clothes is not too heavy. If they're too heavy, they'll pull the tent down or you have to put up some bracing. But I put wet clothes across there and let them dry. I'll tell you that these eye shelters are not rainproof that the water will re uh, drip down the sides of these things will get inside but you can fix that you know like I said using heavy paint and fix some of these uh, little hose in it and it works out pretty good so if you stay to the center you won't get wet but to the sides it, you will uh, the floor here I'm using oriented uh, strand board again it's probably last longer than what it would in the rain in this type of water because rainwater has hydrogen peroxide in it which uh, make it r warp and rot a lot faster I don't know if you can see that down there but anyway I got this up on uh, some two before blocks you always want to use pressure treated lumber but uh, probably the best thing would probably be bricks or or use some PCV pipe, you know, at least two inches high to get it at least two inches. And I'll just let the water run under the tent to this ice house to let the water run off. And it works good. And this here is a ladder I built a few years ago. Uh, before I really knew anything about lumber. And I guess I got non-pressurized treated lumber. So that's starting to rot. That's the ladder I built. It's starting to rot out. So you always want to use pressure treated lumber. This right here is my Whirlpool hot water tank that I just put in. 
And what I got leading up to this is them Gilmore valves, which I said cost like ten dollars. And then these hoses that I got running to it are uh, Sears. Uh, these are Sears Craftsman's hose. These are rubber hose. And one of the reasons I use this is because one winter I came out and these water lines were all froze up and everything. And so I started just uh, wiggling the hose and it came unthawed. You know, after I just crinkled the hose and it came unthawed and the water lines, the hose weren't busted or anything. So I said, hey, this would be good for using for water lines. And if it's set up right using good quality stuff, it works out really good. There's that Gilmore that I got connected right here. I had one thing about it is I had to use a metal uh, three quarter inch coupler because I couldn't find it at the time, but eventually I did find one. But I might set this up a little bit because it's got a, a leak in it and I need to redo this, but it works good. You know, something I had this hot water tanking out here uh, since about 2006, still in the box. And uh, anyway, hot water tank to finally give out before I got this. And then I opened up the box and and uh, found out this thing is a computerized hot water tank. And I thought, oh no, you know, this thing's going to give me much problem, you know. Of course, Whirlpool's reputation not building really good stuff. You know, I thought this is going to be nothing problem, but so far it's worked good. I guess you can see the leak right there where that rust is coming up from there, from that metal coupling. I want to replace that with brass coupler. Uh, this is about all I got to say for right now. As always, uh, Click on where it says uh, show more on like on all my videos. Always click on where it says show more because I write more information in there than what's on the video. One other thing I wanted to show you: if you should break one of these fiberglass rods right here, uh, what you can do is get you some uh, half-inch uh, PCV pipe and then make a sleeve over it and this part right there where it connects to that joint thing you're going to have to take a a wood rat tail file and um, grind that out a little bit so it'll go over the the fitting there another thing you want to do is the ice and snow this thing is not strong enough to support the ice and snow if it gets on it so you do want to put up some extra bracing. You can put that uh, like right, right there in, in the corners. And if you got the room, you can put it up, put one right in the center. That would work really good. Also on top of that, there's a hook where you can uh, make you some kind of uh, frame or something to hold it up from the center. Another thing, if you stay out in one of these things in a lightning storm, you're going to want to run a piece of wire across the top of this thing or use some of uh, that tin because uh, one thing you don't want to do is lightning coming through there. I did in one lightning storm. I stayed out here one one night in a I stayed out here one night in a lightning storm, and that was pretty scary, especially when I found out them rods weren't. The holding them weren't made out of metal, they were fiberglass, you know, there was nothing to run the lightning to the ground. So you want to make some kind of lightning protection if you stay out. And like I said, these things do leak, so you're going to have to fix it where it is waterproof. And cover it with some paint or tarp or something. Uh, here's something else I wanted to show you. It's the... Uh, the sprayer nozzles. I use these right here. These um, I'm not sure what brand they are. I get them at Lowe's for two dollars and fifty cents. I've used the more expensive ones. You know that cost you know up around ten, fifteen dollars. But the problem is when it's freezing cold, it always busts them. And uh, 
So I was used to the cheaper ones because they're they're just cheap to replace. Because if you and besides that, I don't really find the more expensive ones to last any longer. But what I do is I put a uh, Gilmore uh, shut off valve on the sprayer and keep the sprayer nozzle uh, open at all times if you got high wa water pressure it'll, it'll bust that plastic but you can put that uh, valve uh, use the valve the Gilmore valve and it won't bust and also what I use for high pressure water are these type of connectors here on the the left here and these work really well but uh, if you try to put them in a hose they're really difficult to get in there you you almost have to be as strong as a as a gorilla to get them them in there but what I find what you can do is use a little bit of um, light oil and try to get it in there and then uh, you spray squirt some oil inside while you're trying to do it and uh, and you might put a, a cap over the end of it or something and then take a hammer and uh, pound it in. You know, put a cap or wood block so you don't damage the threads and then try to try to hammer it in. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that works, but they're really difficult to get in there. But as I said, I always use these Gilmore's in front of uh, these water valves and these... Uh, sprayer nozzles you know they're like only two dollars and fifty cents at Lowe's and so when the whenever it freezes up and and busts them they're they're cheap to replace and this right here is something uh, my parents built in 1986 or 7 and it was a ramp to take the tractor up into that uh, thing right there it sets on stilts um, because this is in a floodplain and they wanted something for the tractor but as you can see right here that uh, warper board the top of that rotted out and a bunch of them boards also rotted out October 1986 and the water here was about five foot deep and that's the reason they built this that warper board they for some reason that's still there I don't know why and there's what they used right there to pull the tractor the tractor couldn't make it up this this ramp by itself so they went and made an electric uh, winch for it that would uh, lift it up I also used this to get my old motorcycle up the ramp and uh, and ride down it to get it to get it started right here is the remains of a shed that you, my dad built back in uh, uh, the early 70s and you see that's no more there it was made out of wood and had a shingle type roof this this old shed had a shingle type roof and it fell down this right here is a shed that was built in the early 60s and as you see this thing has a tin siding galvanized tin siding look it's still standing but it has a shingle type roof so can't expect it to last forever inside this is how the structure of the thing is built it's got these two befores go up and it's got a cross beam up there And this is how this is built and it's pretty strong too when I was a kid I went and took a 55 gallon uh, oil drum 
filled it full of water and put it on top of this shed and filled it full of water. <laughs> it's remarkably it held up, but apparently it did. And then this would be a cheaper type of wood framing right here. Well, that's a pretty strong structure right here. It's probably I estimate about 12 feet wide. Mm, probably about 18 feet long. So this is about about a 10 foot roof, I'd say. It's well, that's a really good right here. It's a good strong structure. It's held out since the early 60s. Not to mention, you can see that this thing was built cheaply. In the early 90s, this this garage right here, the, it fell in because the snow falling on top of it. So the man that lives here, he went and. Uh, had called out some guys and they put in the steel beams and they has got here for quite a while welding and everything putting in steel beams because a snowstorm left so much heavy snow that it caused this to collapse and so he rebuilt the roof on it using all steel structure intensive right here are some designs that I've been uh, working on uh, one to the right up the upper part there is a four by four and then that would be an other four by four and then up and that's the four by four right and there's a be a V cut in the board right there holding a V cut right there you cut a V and then you put the other 4x4 four four in that V. Then you would drive a uh, a boat through it, holding it right there. You'd want to put this one, uh, use a post hole digger or something, and put that in the ground to hold this post up. And you, I guess, have to get up there with a ladder or something and then lift that up and put it in. And then that would be uh, your warper board or whatever kind of board you're going to use. And nail that. And that would come down like that. And then uh, I'm still working on that design right there. Because I want to use the minimum amount of lumber without cutting out a bunch of pieces. And I think I drew something up, but I'm not sure where it's. Uh, but anyway, when it comes to structures, sometimes it is better to have two small, two small structures than one large structures. Because like we've seen a while ago, is that big garage it collapsed in because it was a big structure. But now, if it was two smaller structures, it might not have collapsed. It's just like it's, you know the. The Jonesy type people will tell you it's better to have one big air conditioner than a smaller air conditioner because bigger. But actually, that's really not true as far as I can tell. It's actually better to have two smaller air conditioners. Say like uh, you have two 8,000 air con. 8,000 BTU air conditioners instead of a 16,000 BTU air conditioner because that's actually more efficient to if you got two windows if you don't got two windows then you just have to go with a the bigger air conditioner but if you got the t two windows for it it's better to have two 8,000 BTU air conditioners and two small ones because that that helps keep your humidity down and then when you can alternate back and forth between the two air conditioners during running time and then when it gets super hot you can turn on both air conditioners and have the same as one big one so 
actually so often two smaller ones are better than one large one and that's, that's true with uh, uh, freezers too got this holiday uh, five uh, cubic feet freezer for about a hundred and sixty dollars at Lowe's and this is really a good freezer it doesn't build up frost too bad and uh, I don't even have any freezer burn that I can tell as I've had with other freezers in the past so this is a pretty good freezer and, and two, two smaller freezers are better than one large I mean if one goes out you still can save some of your food not to mention it's a whole lot easier to for one person to uh, move it around I just want to show you this little air conditioner here I got uh, Solaris I guess that's how you pronounce it I got it's kind of a newer brand of air conditioner but it's 5000 BTU kind of an energy hog but that's what I was using in my tent but I was powering it on a lightweight uh, electric cut cord. There it is from the back. 